And in particular, we we're going to look at today in this video, um, its behavior at long wavelengths. You may remember for, from classical physics that Raleigh Jean's law worked at long wavelengths, but it fell at shorter wavelengths in what was known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Planck's radiation, on the other hand, with the introduction of quantization, was able to reproduce the entire spectrum over all wavelengths. But with that, it's naturally to think that at long wavelengths, Planck's distribution will be reduced to Raleigh Jean's law. And that's what we're going to be doing today, how that is obtained. Okay, first let's write down the two distributions. We have Planck on the left, Raleigh Jean's on the right, and you can see that, of course, Planck's has Planck's constant and also this exponential factor, whereas Raleigh Jean's has temperature and lambda to the power of 4. Now, 1 over lambda to the power of 4, when these uh, wavelengths become really short, the value of this distribution goes really high, and that's why it fails at short wavelengths. It doesn't have a maximum, it just keeps increasing as you make wavelengths shorter and shorter. Now, if we're looking at long wavelengths, let's see what happens to this argument of the exponential in Planck's distribution. Since we have uh, that lambda is in denominator, as this one goes to infinity, this argument is going to go to zero. In that limit, we can use Taylor expansion to see how this function behaves. Now, remember that in Taylor expansions, we have to take n derivatives of the functions evaluated at a particular point, and we're doing this expansion around a certain value. We're going to be using Maclaurin series that takes this a equals to zero. One thing to note is that the derivative of the exponential, e to the u, is the same exponential, e to the u. That's true for the first derivative. If you take the second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative, then it has to be e to the u. And the fourth derivative is going to be the derivative of the third derivative, and then that's going to be e to the u, and so forth, and so on and so forth. So the nth derivative of e to the u is still e to the u. That's going to be very useful because then when we do the expansion around a equals zero, Maclaurin series, then we end up with e to the u. One thing to notice is that since I'm saying u is equal to this argument, the relationship between u and lambda is inversely proportional, so if lambda goes to infinity, u goes to zero. And if I, we have this expansion here, all these terms, since u is almost zero, u squared is going to be a smaller number, u cubed is going to be even a smaller number, and so on, all the terms higher than order 2 are going to be much smaller than the first term that I have in my expansion, u. So I can basically discard all the higher order terms and then end up only with 1 plus u over 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, u is all this argument of my exponential, so I just get the substitution. e to the power of u is approximately 1 plus the argument in the range of long wavelengths. Finally, what I have to do is to substitute into Planck's distribution. Instead of e to the power of u, I put 1 plus u, and then I cancel everything that I can cancel. 1 minus 1 is 0, hc cancels with hc, one of these lambda cancels with one of these lambda, and then I end up with this expression, which is exactly the same as we wrote down as being Raleigh Jean's law. And that's it. Using Taylor expansions, looking at the behavior and the, at the extremes, we can reduce Planck's uh, distribution into Raleigh Jean's distribution. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later.